สวัสดีครับ It's Thursday, May 16th. I'm JP m i s t a n z a and this is Phuket Extra, brought to you by PSD Windows and Doors. Now, here's the news you need to know. Since 2017, Phuket Town has had plans to bury the power and communication cables underground, especially along parts of Pangnao Road and Rasada Road. And it was supposed to be done July of last year, but in a statement this week, officials are saying that it will be done by the end of August, trying to spin it as quote well ahead of projected October deadline. But we're not buying it. The works to install the cables underground along Pangnao Road will be done by the end of June. While the cables along Rasada Road will be underground by the end of August, and this all was announced yesterday by the Phuket Town's Public Works and Planning Department Chief Dawi Hong Wan, in which he had the gall to say it was all being done quote ahead of schedule. But like almost every other infrastructure project on this island, this project was supposed to be done before on July 20th of last year under a 166 million baht contract with SCG 1995 Co Ltd, the company hired to carry out the works, which began back on July 25th, 2017. The news comes just over a month after a local resident humiliated officials by posting a series of photos online showing unfinished and dangerous road surfacing fails that were left on both the Rasada and Pangnao roads. And it wasn't until those photos were posted in early April that officials finally began doing emergency repairs, setting a random October deadline, which now they claim will be done before that. Perhaps if work will actually be done this time, but don't hold your breath. A 21-year-old Phuket man studying in Bangkok has been arrested on an outstanding warrant for a slew of charges for his alleged role in the Talang riot four years ago. During the riot, which lasted through the night of October 11, 2015, hundreds of protesters torched cars and hurled bricks at Talang police station in retaliation to two local teenagers dying in a motorbike chase by police allegedly pursuing the teens to arrest them for drugs. The riot caused 6.7 million baht in damage to government property and 21 cars were vandalized. The cops involved in the teen deaths were later acquitted as the deaths were ruled accidental. But now, four years later, the Lang police traveled all the way to the capital to arrest 21-year-old Satawa Tangjit, accusing him of several charges, including burning public property and, quote, uniting with 10 or more people to engage in violence of, or threaten to use violence. The suspect, Satawa, he's 21 right now, but he was 17 at the time of the riots, a juvenile under Thai law. But police did not confirm whether he's being charged as a juvenile or adult. Police also said that Sedawat alleges he was on holiday at the time. Sedawat is also the 74th of 84 suspects total wanted for their involvement, with the search for the remaining 10 ongoing. A team of 30 volunteers, including 20 foreigners, are part of the new coral restoration project that began at Maya Bay yesterday. The area has been closed to tourists since June 1st of 2018 and will remain closed until the middle of 2021 in order to protect the island from environmental damage brought on by over-tourism, according to officials. To help the bay recover from the environmental damage, a team of 30 divers are joining a project from the Marine National Parks Department to move young coral fragments and plant them in calm waters to avoid damage from strong waves during the monsoon season. This week's trip will be the last one before they stop for the next few months because of the monsoon and the priority is to plant about a thousand fragments that were planted last October. For more, visit the PhuketNews.com. Phuket Extra will be right back after this. Entries are almost sold out. Don't miss the chance to experience the leading destination marathon in Southeast Asia. Welcome back to Phuket Extra. This couple in their 50s were arrested in 2010, accused of illegal logging, but they claimed they were just trying to collect wild mushrooms and were at the wrong place at the wrong time. And now two years after serving their five-year prison sentence, they're now being freed on a royal pardon. 
Tears of joy after 54-year-old Udon Sirison and his 51-year-old wife, Dang, were released from Kalasin Provincial Prison today on a royal pardon marking the coronation of His Majesty the King. And they served 20 months of a five-year jail sentence, but many online have been super critical of the courts and logging officials who say that they should have never been in prison in the first place. The two were arrested back in July of 2010, nine years ago, riding their motorcycle into the Dong Ranong National Park to collect wild mushrooms, they say. And at the same time, in the same area, authorities were closing in on illegal loggers, but they got away. The couple were startled by what they saw and they ran away too, but they left their bike and police traced it back to them, arresting the couple, and they were prosecuted with forestry officials accusing them of felling about 700 trees over a 72 rye area of protected forest. The lawyer and neighbors told them to confess, saying they would get leniency and no jail time, but it backfired and were sentenced to 30 years in prison, which was half to 15 years, they appealed and were released on bail until the appeal ruling, which upheld the 15-year sentence, and then was later reduced to five years two years ago in 2017. And yet, the Red Bull heir who killed a cop, Boss Uvidia, he's not even showed up to court once in the seven years since the fatal hit and run. The body of an ethnic Chinese man who worked in Thailand decades ago and was later executed over the murder of a young boy well, the body is still on display at Sri Raj Hospital and now the hospital management say they will be releasing never before seen autopsy re results soon. The announcement came this week just as news that 11,000 people signed an online petition along with some fierce debate on the social media, all calling for the hospital to stop displaying Si Ui's embalmed body and remove the sign that calls him a cannibal. The man, who was ethnically Chinese, he migrated to Thailand and worked as a laborer in several provinces and in 1958 he was arrested in Rayong province, reportedly in possession of the body of a boy whose heart and liver was extracted. He was accused of murdering not just that boy, but seven other children, removing their internal organs, boiling them and eating them. He was executed by firing squad the next year, but now hospital management say they will release new information on his body. And that's it for Phuket Extra, brought to you by PSD Windows and Doors. For safe, secure, and soundproof windows, visit ppcphuket.com. If you're watching us on YouTube, click that subscribe button to check out all of our future videos. And if you're watching us on Facebook, give us a like on the Phuket News page. From all of us here at the Phuket News Center, thank you for watching, and until tomorrow, stay classy, Phuket. Phuket's rapid modernization has made it one of the world's premier holiday destinations. Investors can still buy quality condominiums for as low as 75,000 US dollars and luxury properties can go all the way up to 20 million. Condominiums in Phuket are a safe, secure bricks and mortar investment offering foreigners freehold ownership. Call or email Thai Residential. Phuket's number one trusted real estate advisor to find your perfect Phuket property.